There was a maker of this expanse, of this heavens, of this highness. And that is the most high God. And it draws our attention upward. That's one of the benefits of going out. Listen, we ought to be worshiping the Lord in the house of God. But you know what? You can worship the Lord outside too. And as you are in His creation, as you look up into the heavens, you realize the maker of this is bigger and higher than all of this and leaves us in awe. In that very same psalm, Psalm 8, verse 3, when I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him? We realize as human beings how little we are, how small we are. Yes, significant to God, but we are very small, and God wants us to know that. Because even though man does not even exist yet, even though man has not yet sinned, God, already knowing what would happen, created all of this for a purpose, to teach us human beings that God is above all of the expanse, and that we are but a small created thing in perspective. God wants us to see that. God wants us to know that. There's also a divine preparation for life in all of this. Because water already exists. But on this day, I, it doesn't exactly say that God created the air, uh, oxygen, gas, or that. Not exactly. But it was there on the second day. It was there. And you know, God created the water and it created the expanse with air knowing that the life that he would be creating the very next day would need those things. Oxygen, carbon dioxide, God knew. God knew exactly what he was doing. This was not a thing, oh, what am I going to do today? Okay, I'm going to make uh, light. That's a cool thing. Okay, light. And then, okay, what am I going to make today, the next day? Uh, well, I'll make this expanse and divide the book. It was all planned. God knew exactly what he was doing. He knew exactly what man and life would need in order to exist in this world that he was creating. So it was preparatory. Something else that we see, especially in regards to the waters above the, fir uh, the, uh, above the firmament, it's God's divine protection of life. Now, this sounds strange, but the whole meteorological system as we know it today was not original to the plan of God. Now, God knew it was going to become like it is today. He already knew that, but He didn't create it that way. No, when God divided the waters from the waters, when there were waters above the firmament, it was more than just the clouds as we know them today. Perhaps a kind of canopy, a suspended vapor, or perhaps ice crystals. I don't know. The Bible doesn't tell us that. But what I do know is that in the beginning, until the time of Noah, that there was no rain upon the earth. That was not how things worked in the original creation. There was no rain upon the earth. I know that runs them up to our thinking, and yet look what it says in Genesis 2, 5 and 6. It says this, And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord had not caused it to rain upon the earth. And there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. There wasn't rain as we know it today. There was some kind of a mist coming up that took care of the watering of the ground. You say, explain that scientifically. I cannot. Maybe other people can. I can't. All we know is that it was different in the beginning. 